So what I'm going to do with this piece of uh, printed textile is uh, just play with it essentially. So I'm going to show you how sometimes I print on a, a wetted surface. Obviously my uh, the paint I put on here is going to be transparent and not really opaque. There we go, and I'm just going to literally take it straight from the jar and put it on with a big brush. And I'm so sorry, once again, the Flicker Demon is with us, and I'm afraid I just, until I can afford to buy a better quality PC, uh, I'm just stuck with this. It just needs a better kind of processor. So I'm really sorry, but it, when I can uh, afford this, I would really like not to have to present my videos like this. Yep, so there we go. I'm just putting some of that violet over there. And of course, the textile's wet. It's uh, coming out quite fairly transparent and pale. And it's easily rubbed into the fabric. my fabby fabby stencil now I'm going to do I want to darken up this textile so I'm going to do this in a really dark violet Just uh, putting, I've just put the paint on the palette over here and I'm r rolling my foam roller into it to fill the roller. I'm putting a fairly, whoops, light coat of paint on there. And of course, because the fabric's wet, it's uh, absorbing in there quite readily. I think I might just put a bit more opacity into that ink. There you go. 
Wow, so it's given it uh, a whole different kind of uh, complexity. Yeah, I think that's a good word to describe it. <laughs> it's made it more complex. Okay. Now I want to move the fabric and I can actually like move it and put it on top of that wet move the dry and put it over the top of that wet and it will soak through so let's just allow that to happen just out of curiosity's sake shall we here we go it's probably too subtle for you to be able to see but i'm getting some interesting uh, spots of color coming through there and here we go. I'm just going to pop this over here. And that's my hard roller. This is my hard rubber roller. So I'm taking all the excess paint off there. And I haven't lined it up over the bottom print. So I'm just putting a sort of random spotty patches of pale ink on there through this process. Cool. That's just fine. Liking that. Okay, so let me play some more over here. This is one of those uh, pastel, water soluble pastel crowns, they will uh, they will set if you iron them. Also if I use them over the top of uh, pr printing ink, they will you know bond with the chemicals that bond the printing ink. And as I'm doing that, I'm allowing the fabric to wrinkle. And going into here with the wet brush. The brush is just wet with water. So that, that ink is spreading a bit. That pastel. Soaking up that pale wet ink that's on the table. Very good. Okay, so now we're gonna, this is still relatively dry. It's not nearly as wet as that lower part that I printed before. So I'm going to put the stencil back over and do some printing on the dry to get a slightly different effect. Cool. <laughs> okay. Lining it up with the print underneath. There we go. Now, let me think. Hmm, I think 
I want orange over there. Here's orange. And I'm changing roller because if I use that one that's already inked up with the dark purple, it won't look anything like orange. Okay, we are now looking for a stick to get some paint out. Okay, filling that clean new roller. This sponge roller is almost a virgin. I think I've only used it once. Here we go. So, putting the orange ink over the red on the relatively dry background. Picking up the corner there just to check if I'm liking the effect, and I am, it's good. You're going to get to see in a moment. Ping! Makes it really pop, doesn't it? Okay, now, I may not... Heavens. <laughs> okay. Never mind, we'll put that over there. Uh, yep, I think I'm going to dry these prints out and come back and show you the finished result quite soon. Well, I like that piece of textile. I overprinted so much that I'm going to cut out the back of the Manzano jacket out of this piece of printed textile and I've already sewed it to this other piece I showed you a while back in the beginning so we'll just cut that out and then I'll resume doing some patching to make enough fabric for the next parts of the Manzano jacket but I just really wanted to have that piece as the back weight plates cool okay
upper back of my next Manzano jacket. And I have this lovely piece of fabric I collected at a garage sale perhaps a week ago, three bucks. I think it's about three or four meters there. I think it's some sort of vicose, viscose. It's nice and drapey, quite light. I'm going to use this as the lining for this Manzano jacket. Back soon. I'll catch up with where things are at at the moment. This is the back. I put this strip of uh, upholstery fabric down the middle there. This is a fabric I've recently collected too. And it's it's absolutely hideous. It's taking all my resources, creative resources, to be able to do anything to salvage this fabric. It really is an absolute abomination. It's obviously a thousand percent synthetic. It's probably taken uh, several major lakes worth of water, good pure drinking water, to manufacture this horrible textile. It's even got lurex in it. I mean, can you imagine decorating your home with that? Sitting on a piece of furniture covered with this? It's hideous. So I'm doing my best to do something with this because I've taken it out of the waste stream thinking it was my ethical responsibility, otherwise it was going to be, you know, rotting under the ground for the next thousand years. Yeah, so I'm going to do my best to incorporate some of this revoltingness. This is the other piece of textile I've patched together to cut the fronts and other parts of the coat from. Now I'm going to have to do quite a lot of printing on this so I'm about to embark on that and allow you to watch how it proceeds. This is my dotty pressure plate. I'm putting it under there. Now, uh, yeah, sorry, I've just stepped out there to get a bit of paint. Now, I still have my roller he here that I used to print the orange a while back. As you can see, I'm applying that very crudely. Crude, crude, crude. I'm just trying to blot out some of that dark brown Duna cover, which is this fabric here. Uh, really, could have done with a bit more orange in there. Uh, yeah, let's go a bit more orange. It's a little kind of whitish, and I'd hope for something a little more, uh, a little more colour in it. So there we go. Overprinting that now. A bit more orange ink in the roller. Do-da, do-da, Camp Town races, la-di-da. Okay, here we go. I've got to feel the print plate to know where it is under the fabric. And I'm going to overprint on this once this is dried out, I'm going to be putting some more of those uh, mandala stencils over there 
I'm just trying to create a bit of a uh, background background noise <laughs> hmm. <clears throat> heavens I just ordered some more textile pan I think I need some orange yes I should have ordered some orange I'm running out fave colour There we go, there we go. All right, I'm gonna dry this out, come back soon with the next part. Printing on the back corner of the Manzano coat. Pressure plate again, orange. Printing just that single motif. Here's the fabric. Now I am very susceptible to overworking things and I've got a feeling with this one I may have overworked it. However, I'm going to cut the fronts out and we'll see what we get because one thing I know about fabric and paint and printing is that I can always alter it again if I feel it's not quite working. So here we go. I'm going to cut the fronts of the Manzano jacket before your very eyes. Watch while I put my head in the mouth of the lion. <laughs> You're right. Okay. So, I've already given it a bit of an eyeball and decided where I'm going to uh, cut the fronts from. And this is where I decided. Over yon. Weights. It's going to leave me with a nice big scrap over here for the sleeves or possibly for the uh, lower part of the jacket. Okay, that's the scrap, it'll be worked into the sleeves. Here we go, left and right fronts of the Manzano jacket. Well, there we go. Yep, quite like that. Not too bad. I really like this print up here. Uh, I don't think the video cam is doing it much justice. You can't really see all the 
incredibly interesting layers and colours that are all flooded together there. Uh, yeah, cool. Alright, I'm going to go and be back again another day.